दीक्षा गुरु के मान जानी कहा कृष्ण रसोरू और शिक्षा गुरु कृष्ण रसोरू एक रूप और एक स्वरूप बताया गया इसलिए दोनों शिक्षा गुरु और दीक्षा गुरु दोनों हो सकते हैं भारत महाराज की जय तो इन सब तत्वों को समझ कर दिया दोनों का भी न सुन शिक्षा गुरु और दीक्षा गुरु कोई तो कैसा ऐसे उच्च विचार जी मतलब तो कनिष्ठ अधिकार वाले गुरु नहीं मध्यम में भी कनिष्ठ मध्यम कनिष्ठ नहीं मध्यम मध्यम या मध्यम का उत्तम हो तब और उत्तम भागवत हो तो तो कहा नहीं क्या किंतु साधारण कृष्ण व्यक्ति के लिए उत्तम भागवत को समझना भारी कठिन है इसलिए अपने अधिकार से कुछ उन्नत हो स्वजाति स्निग्ध हो और इन सब विषय में उन्नत हो ऐसे गुरु हो अंततः वो संबंध ज्ञान दे सकते अनर्थम गुरु कर सकते हैं उनमें कुछ अनर्थ हमारा भगवत अनुभूति है शास्त्रों का ज्ञान है उनकी इन सबको दूर कर सकते हैं और समझ स्वयं विश्व से बहुत वैराग्य मान ऐसा गुरु होना चाहिए ऐसे लोगों को ऐसे जो गुरु हैं शिक्षा गुरु दीक्षा गुरु इनको मन इनकी सेवा को अपनी अभिष्ट सेवा अभिष्ट से मैंने कृष्ण सेवा की वासना देने वाली कृष्ण प्रेम कृष्ण भक्ति को देने वाले इस अभिष्ट की ये पूर्ति कर सकते हैं ऐसे गुरु इनकी विषम रूप से सेवा समस्त शास्त्रों में श्री गुरुदेव को सर्वदेव में कहा गया और नित्य भगवत प्रकाश माना गया अतः इनमें मनुष्य बुद्धि कदात्मक करो जैसे गुरु जी का खड़ा है भगवान का खड़ा है क्या करो उसको लकड़ी मानेगा या क्या मानेगा लकड़ी है चैतन्य महाप्रभु के खड़ा हूं वहां पर गंभीरा में देखे हम लोग के गुरु जी का प्रभुपाद जी के बहुत सी चीजें हैं इसको क्या हम लोग मानेंगे लकड़ी या जूता मानेंगे या क्या मानेंगे उन्हीं का प्रकाश उसको मानेंगे इसलिए गुरु जी में भी मनुष्य बुद्धि मत करो कदापि आरोप नहीं करना चाहिए उनमें सदैव उपास्य भाव रखना चाहिए इसलिए थोड़ा सा बोल लीजिए तब आगे बढ़ेंगे
but still for sadhak it is difficult to adopt there are two things one is ras for ras we should know its ingredients and the second important thing is that we should know the proportion of ingredients to be to mix up so that we can make a ras shila rup goswami gave us ingredients but not proportion that was given by shila raghunath das goswami <laughs> if we go to a doctor he he catches our disease he can prescribe us medicine but he has not said that what type of medicine uh, uh, how the medicine has to be taken when we go to his compounder he gives us medicine and gives us detail how to take that medicine so similarly shri raghunath das goswami as compounder is telling that how should take the, how should we take this medicine how to be mixed in what proportion proportion <laughs> Therefore, in order to understand mana shiksha, it is very essential that first we should memorize and make our soul and life upadesham. When we will adopt, when I say adopt means that we make atma saath in Hindi. That is the word, one word, atma saath. When we contemplate on and ponder upon upadesham, then after. following this we are eligible to understand mana shiksha this is the most important thing probably shri prabhu ba used to say that these two books high class of scriptures upadesha amrit and mana shiksha they are yam for sahajiyas you know yam those who take to hellish planet they are yam for Yamraj, Lord of Death, for Sahajia. Sahajia, those who adopt, you know, Sahajia. Purpose of our life is to cultivate this bhakti, given by Sri Rup Goswami and Sri Ramnath Das Goswami from their Upadesha and Manas Shiksha. We have to cultivate this. Our purpose is not to. Construct big temples and mud. That is not the purpose of our bhakti. Shri Rup Goswami Maharaj is quoting. He he has constructed such a big temple, but he himself was not doing any priest seva in that temple. He is giving an example that our purpose is something else. all these temples books preaching spreading preaching these all are meant for those who are not yet qualified to adopt such a high class bhakti so along with these things we should know that what is the main thing if we will miss the main thing and will centralize center, ourselves in these other things then we won't progress important thing is that we should know what is the main thing and in order to understand this main thing now we come to mana shiksha's first verse here shri raghunanda das goswami he is talking to his man his mind look the humility of such a high class advanced devotee they don't want to become guru so they are not floating their instruction directly to all of us otherwise we will consider that he is our guru and we are his disciple he is instructing his man his mind he is saying to his man reman oh my dear brother mind you please give up all kind of proud you give up your proud of body pride of body pride of intelligence very very heavy pride that is pride of intelligence and then 
You study your guru. You should. It is not exactly serving the whole sentence that you should. Rati ka vidhan karo. You should get an attachment for your Gurudev, for Brajidham, for Brajavasi, for Vaishnava, for Guru Mantra, and at the lotus feet of Radha Krishna conjugal. And what is this Rati? Then explaining this Rati, Maharaj is saying not ordinary Rati. In order to understand Rati, he is giving, quoting from the commentary, we should have Rati at the lotus feet of Gurudev. What does it mean? Explaining the meaning of Rati. That it is it should not be it should not be ordinary Rati. Oh, I, just... I was going to explain about Rati. Parshabda, Nishta, Anatmi Guave. Then Ruchi, then Ashakti, and then Rati will come from the associates of Krishna. That is Rati. Maharaj has not explained the Rati. For explaining Rati, he is first explaining Shraddha. Yes, I was explaining. In order to explain Rati, he is first explaining Shraddha. Shraddha is of two kinds one is Paramatic Shraddha, and one is Lokic Shraddha. Faith which we call Shraddha, which is originated by our likings, material likings, that is called Lokik Shraddha. But when we hear some pastimes from our Gurudev, and we get attached to the pastimes of Krishna, and hence, we generate faith in our Gurudev, that is Paramatik Shraddha. If by associating of high class of Vaishnavas, a desire to come comes in heart, then that all Paramatis have become. Otherwise, no, never it becomes. The first thing is coming when our heart just has. Desire to serve Krishna. And where from it will come? Maharaj is again saying. When we hear the pastime of Krishna from high class of Vaishnava, by their narration they will instill a desire in our heart to serve Krishna. And when this desire comes, this will reflect outwardly in the form of Shraddha. This is Parmatik And that Shraddha will be called Parmatik Shraddha. Maharaj is explaining in it who, when once have Paramatik Shraddha, then he comes to the point of initiation. He accepts initiation from his Gurudev. And this is real initiation. This is, this is called real initiation. Who can initiate? Maharaj is explaining very, very, very clearly. One who is free from other terms, free from unwanted desire, and who can make us free from anartha. Two things. Who himself is free from anartha and who can make other free from anartha. <coughs> Only he can be guru. Who has got his specific relationship with Krishna? Not ordinary relationship. Krishna Saman. There are two types of Saman. Each and every living entity is Krishna, Nitya, Das. This is not a specific relationship. This is general relationship. But who can be Guru Maharaj? is clearly saying one who has got a specific relationship with Krishna and he realizes he has got Anubhuti, he can be Guru. One who has himself a specific relationship and can give, grant that relationship to others also. And both type of relationship, I, I 
understand here Maharaj is saying that for the neophyte person he can grant the initial relationship, general samadha and for high class of devotees this type of group can grant a specific type of relationship. This must be characteristic of Gurudev. <coughs> there are two types of Guru. One is Pathapradrasha Guru and one is Chiksha Guru. Pathapradrasha Guru who shows our path who shows our path to such a high class of advanced devotee from whom we attain Chiksha. So we should not mix both Guru and should not equalize it at the same level. Patapardrashya is showing you path to high class of Shiksha Guru. Does not mean that he may be also of the high class level. But scripture says that Shiksha Guru and Diksha Guru, they, sh they are on the same level. Diksha Guru is one. It may be one. And if they are not one, they should not be considered different. <coughs> because according to Chaitanya Kaitanya, Diksha Guru is Krishna's Guru and Shiksha Guru is Krishna's Dhabhu. <coughs> so, they should be taken on the same platform. Who can be such type of Guru? Maharaj is explaining here that a conished devotee, a person and you fight on standing on the first stage cannot become Guru. Even if he is is attains the first stage of Madhyam Adhikar, <coughs> Madhyam Adhikar means there are three types of devotees. That is Bhakta, Madhyam Adhikari and Uttam Adhikari. So one who comes on the initial stage of Madhyam Adhikari, he is also not a fit Guru. The Guru should be is at least from Madhyam Madhyam. That is when he attains the secondary stage of Madhyam Adhikar. Then he is supposed to be Guru. He can know that who is Kanishtu, who is Madhyam, who is Uttam Mahabharata. He can some Because on this level, one can distinguish between the different levels of Vaishnava. Who is on Uttam Adhikar, who is on Madhyam Adhikar, and who is on Kanishtu Adhikar. Here Maharaj is also explaining one thing. That uh, it may it may be so that for Kanishtha Adhikari it is very difficult to get teaching from Uttam Adhikari because activity of Uttam Adhikari can never be and teaching of Uttam Adhikari can never be understood by a Kanishtha Adhikari. <coughs> so for him it is essential that he should have Guru from little lower grade. But Guru should be, who can really transmit something to us, must be at least situated on Madhyam, Madhyam Adhikar. <coughs> then we should render our service to our Gurudev. When we will render our service to Gurudev, then he will give us abhis, our cherished desire. Because he is capable of giving this cherished desire. We should not have Mrat with Buddhi. That our Gurudev is a material, mundane body. He is living in this body. His body is eternal. His everything which he uses is eternal. How we will deal with wooden sandal of our Gurudev, Kharam? How we will deal with his clothes? They are none but his manifestation, his prakash, not less than that. There is wooden, wooden sandal of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Jagannath Puri. How do we take it? As Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself. So we should have such a high class of respect to all those things which he uses. His body is also eternal and his all the things, his all paraphernalia which he uses is eternal. और बाकी जो हैं हम लोग कल इसके विषय में बताएंगे अभी बहुत ही सुंदर शिक्षा और ड्रामा प्ले होने वाला है आज हमारे सौभाग्य से हम लोगों के सौभाग्य से गौरिया चैतन्य गौरिया मंडल के सेक्रेटरी विद्वान व्यक्ति पावर सज्जन वैष्णव व्यक्ति आज हम लोगों के बीच में उपस्थित है मैं इसे निवेदन करूंगा दस पंद्रह में संक्षेप में सब लोगों के लिए कुछ उपदेश
जिससे कि भक्ति के प्रति हमारी स्थिति हो और शुद्ध भक्ति में हम लोग प्रवेश कर सकें इसके बाद में मैं और ड्रॉन आप सत्संग ऐसे मिलता है ना सत्संग प्रकृति भी सुकृति पूर्व संजित पूर्व पूर्व जन्म हो इस जन्म का ही पूर्व सुकृति का प्रभाव से ही साधु संगत जितना भी सुकृति होगा उसी में भी एक साधु का संग मिलेगा साधु का संग कैसे किया जाएगा साधु भगवान ही तो साधु रूप से आते हैं भगवान ही शास्त्र रूप से आते हैं भगवान ही गुरु रूप से आते हैं साधु शास्त्र गुरु रूपे अपना रही जना क्या जाना गया अपने को न कृष्ण मोर प्रभु प्राता जीवी रहेंगे जीव क्या ज्ञान होगा कि कृष्ण ही मेरा प्रभु कृष्ण ही मेरा प्राण धन्य वाला तो ये कौन जनाएगा कृष्ण ही साधु रूप से गुरु रूप से शास्त्र रूप से शास्त्र रूप से जो भगवान का अवतार इससे ज्ञान लेना मुश्किल है जाओ हिरण्य कशिपु दोबारा अपना पुत्र को पूछा तुम्हारा गुरु का उपदेश क्या था तब उन्होंने उत्तर दिया नवद हस्ती का बारे में श्रवणम कीर्तनांग विष्णु स्मरणम आदशेवनम अर्चनांग मंदनम दश्यम सत्म आत्म निवेदन पुषार पिता विष्णु भक्ति से नवलखन क्रियत भगवती अध्या प्रणन्य अधीत उत्तम जय हमारा गुरु का उपदेश का सार भगवान में अर्पित होकर ये नौ किसिम का भक्त को अनुशीलन करना तभी हिरण्य को शिव को गुस्सा हो गुरु पुत्र का ऊपर ये तुमने हमारा शिष्य पुत्र को ये शिक्षा दी तुम विष्णु का जासूस है इसीलिए हमारा यहां रहते हुए विष्णु का काम कर रहा है तो उन्होंने उत्तर दिया महाराज ये मेरा शिक्षा नहीं है ये मेरा नहीं है नमक प्रणीत हूं तो दूसरी किसने लिया पर अपनी दूसरे किसी ने भी नहीं दिया कहा से आ गया नो इनका स्वभाव है निशर्ग है ये हमारी शिक्षा नहीं है इसीलिए अब मेरा ऊपर गुस्सा मैं आपका शत्रु बन सकता हूं पहली बता दे तब इंद्र शत्रु आप इंद्रो का शत्रु बन सकते हैं इंद्र आपके साथ लड़ सकते हैं मैं गरीब ब्राह्मण मैं आपसे कैसे लड़ू आपके विरुद्ध काम मेरे से हो सकता है कभी तो फिर प्रहलाद को पूछा ये तो तुम्हारा गुरु का उपदेश नहीं है तुम कहा से शिक्षा किया उन्होंने उत्तर क्या दिया नौकरी भी तू वो जानता ही नहीं क्या शिक्षा देगा क्या नहीं जानते सार्थ गति के विष्णु सार्थ का जो गति प्रयोजन का चरम प्रयोजन जो विष्णु ये जानता ही क्यों नहीं जानता ये भी तो शास्त्र पढ़ा ये भी तो वेद अध्ययन किया क्यों नहीं जानते अधुरा सयाजी वो हिरथ मान ये जिसका दुष्ट मतलब है ये दूसरी अर्थ है वेद कल्प वृक्ष है जैसे अपना मन की कल्पना उसी में भी अर्थ ग्रहण करे एक अंधा जैसे दूसरी अंधा को रास्ता नहीं दिखा सकता है इसी में भी ये लोग भी वेद का जो कर्म रज्जु वेद का जो कर्मकांड 
उसी में ही फंस गया उससे आगे नहीं बढ़ सके ताव इससे दूसरी जो गुरु हो जानते हैं इसका क्या कारण है तो बताया जानने के लिए तरीका है क्या तरीका है जब तक जीव निश्चिंचन भगवत भक्त का पाद पद्म रज में अभिषिक्त ना हो तब तक उनका मति कृष्ण पाद पद्म नहीं जा सकता इसीलिए सत्संग जरूरी है इस बेगर नहीं हो सकता इसमें भी बात जड़ भरत भी रूहुगन राजा को बताया रूहुगन ही तत्वशा में जा तदवस्तु इदम वस्तु जगत का वस्तु तो मिल जाएगा तदवस्तु भगवत वस्तु तपसा में जाती तपस्या से मिलता नहीं पूजन से भी नहीं देखो पूजन कर उसमें नौ निर्वापना संसार त्याग करके बबन धर्म नहीं करके संसार विस्तार नहीं करके संन्यास बनने से भी नहीं होता गृहाद्वा गृहस्थ बन के बच्चा पैदा कर संसार वृद्धि करने से भी मिले नंदसा शास्त्र याद कर लिया याद करके तुम तो पूजा दे दिया उससे नहीं नई वजी जल के अंदर में गोता लगा के तपस्या तो करो चारो अग्नि जला के बीच में बैठ के करो नहीं तो सूर्य का तरफ नेगा देके तपस्या तो करो उससे भी नहीं करो किससे मिलेगा बिना महत काम महत का कृपा चाहिए कबीराज विश्वामी यही जन्म चर्चा में बताया महत ही कृपा बिना कृष्ण भक्ति दुरेर संसार नहीं खाए महत का कृपा बेगर कृष्ण भक्ति कभी नहीं मिल सकता है ये बहुत दूर की बात ऐसा कि संसार खाए नहीं होगा यही जो परिवर्तनशील नस्ल वस्तु में जो आसक्ति ये भी जाएगा नहीं महत कृपा बेगर तो वही जो महत वही उनका अंदर में एक लोग महाराज जी ने बताया अधिकार अनुसार कनिष्ठ मध्यम तो उत्तम का साथ साधुओं का संबंध नहीं रह सकता उनसे फायदा साधु को लेना कठिन है जिन्होंने उत्तम होते हुए भी वही मध्यम में रहते हैं क्योंकि उस उसमें भी आचरण जगत जी को कृपा करने के लिए उनसे हम लोगों को फायदा मिलता है उनका चार किसी का विचार है ईश्वर में प्रेम उनका जो अधीन उनके जो भक्त उनसे मैत्री जो जगत में जो फंसा हुआ जीव है जो अज्ञानी है बालिश है उनको कृपा करती है और जो विद्वेशी है उनको उपेक्षा रूप कृपा करती है धाम अधिकारी इससे क्या होता है ना सब कोई फायदा मिलता है विद्वेशी को उपेक्षा करना ये नहीं कृपा इसीलिए वो अपराध करके और नरक का तरफ ना जाए इसलिए उपेक्षा करना बालिश को कृपा करके जान देने की कोशिश करते भक्त का साथ मैत्री उनका साथ वो संदेश की बात है मैं यहां से करता हूं क्योंकि टाइम मंशा कल तो करो कृपा सतीदान Now you can be ready
and make a place for <coughs> you should make a place very soon just now like tomorrow <coughs> and sat down near the deity of Sri Madhava. <coughs> the Brahmin king of that land, accompanied by his entourage, came there, and with great respect and devotion, he worshipped Sri Shalabram Shila, and then satisfied all the Munis with Mahaprasad. Sri Narada Muni, who had observed his activities from a distance, stood up in the assembly of sages and said, this Brahman is very dear to Bhagavan Mahavishnu. Then Sri Narada, who is expert in relishing the mellows of Bhagavad Bhakti, in order to proclaim to the world the glories of the greatest recipient of Sri Krishna's mercy, began to glorify the king. But the king humbly rejected that praise and sent Sri Narada to another king in South India. However, that king also did not consider himself to be a great object of Sri Bhagawan's mercy. And sent Narada to Lord Indra. Indra sent Brahma him to Brahma, and Brahma sent him to Shiva. In this way, Sri Narada wandered throughout the universe searching for the greatest recipient of Sri Krishna's mercy. In his travels, he also took Darshan of Prahlad Maharaj, Hanumanji, the Pandavas, and finally, the residence of Dwarka. Hearing from the Yadavas of the glories of Sri Uddhava, Narad became immersed in the ras of Mahaprame and forgot everything, even playing the veena which he held in his hand. Appearing like a man possessed by ghosts, he walked along the magnificent path leading to Sri Krishna's residence. Sometimes he danced, sometimes he fell to the ground, sometimes he cried out in a distressed voice, and sometimes he exhibited all the symptoms of ecstatic love simultaneously. On that day, Sri Krishna was despondent for some reason and was still sleeping in his bedroom. Sri Uddhava was seated near the doorway, along with Sri Baladev Prabhu, Sri Devaki, Sri Rohini, Sri Bhukmini Devi, and Sri Sachibhama Devi, with all the queens, along with Kamsa's inimical mother, Padma Bhakti. Well known to everyone, 
That's right. Oh, best of sages, humbly bowing down, I implore you not to desire to hear that narration which is saturated with Ross. Firstly, because we're meaning such a well known other than your guide. And secondly, if Sri Sham Sundar himself hears it, he'll be overwhelmed in Raj Bhav. <coughs> Dear Uddhava, O oh, best of those who are known as Haridas, there is no need to say more. Please, do not revive the memory of the Brajvasis. By forgetting this memory, I have finally achieved some momentary happiness. When Sri Vasudev brought me here from Braj, he saw my cried so bitterly that it melted stone and shattered thunderbolts. Shri Krishna returned from the ashes. Being a fool, I briefly and sadly narrated the plight of the Rajasis to But his heart did not melt, even a little. So he did not go there. Knowing you to be expert in delivering clever messages, he sent you instead. Please listen to what I saw with my own eyes. Since Krishna arrived in Vrindavan from the repeated attacks of demons and serpents, so many fearsome creatures, one calamity meant to destroy Raj did not occur. Still, the Raj Vasis never mind being enchanted by the sweetness of Sri Krishna. Everything they did was solely for him, due to their natural love. Everything they did was exclusively for the pleasure of Sri Rajvasis are an immense and unfortunate, being submerged in an ocean of anguish. Why then do you say that they are the greatest object of your master's mercy? Alas, from his childhood, Krishna told to graze the cows of those merciless cowherd men. And then he was told to graze all these cows without even shoes to wear. And then, tortured by hunger, just for taking a little butter, these cowherd women tied him up. <laughs> Those cowards are always complaining about Krishna. How he's always stealing butter from their houses. And now, what can he do for them? After killing all of the Yadavas' enemies, Krishna ruled their capital in the And now, he happily resides here in Dwarka as the king of kings. It's very unfortunate that he does not even remember the French Vasis. Hey, Mother Rohini, you don't know what you're talking about. Don't you understand that his heart is softer than butter? Otherwise, how could you speak this way? Sometimes, at night while he sleeps, he lovingly calls out the names of many cows. Sometimes he calls out the names of his cowherd boyfriends and he pretends to hold the loop to his mouth while he assumes an enchanting threefold posture. Sometimes he calls to me, Hey mother, give me some butter. Sometimes he calls to me, Hey Rade. Hey, the little day. Hey, children, Seeing his anguish, we are plunged into an ocean of sorrow. Sometimes his pillow is drenched with tears. Last night, he saw something in a dream. Which is made him depressed, covering his lotus face with a cloth. He lies there motionless, as if sleeping, and he has not performed any of his daily duties. Rukmini, why do you utter such nonsense? 
saying that he only becomes like that at night. Even when he is awake, he is dazed and behaves just as he does when sleeping. We are his wives in name only. In reality, even the Dazis and the Brudge Gopis are more dear to him than we are. Because we are all engaged in conversing about the plight of the Rajvasis, my brother Krishna is simply exhibiting his expertise in cheating by pretending to be afflicted. In an effort to console them, I went to Raj and stayed there for two months. But neither my words nor actions would pacify them. Seeing that they would not be pacified without Krishna himself coming, I made them various promises that appeased them somewhat, and on the pretext of quickly returning with Krishna, with great difficulty I returned here. Arriving here, I fretfully said to Krishna, on any pretext, go to Raj just once and save the lives of the residents there. His mouth replied, oh, I am going just now. But the thought of it never reached his heart because you can understand a person's heart by their actions.
He will come during this. The simple hearted Rajbasis, we are praising your love. They place those clothes and ornaments on their bodies, thinking that when you returned and saw them wearing those things, you would know them to be obedient to you and be even more merciful. But when you sent me and said with a message, all the Rajbasis, they became as if dead. It was with great difficulty that I told them that you would come, and only by some miracle did I bring them back to life. Hey Prabhu, the Rajbasis have given up everything. They have no desires. They have given up everything. They only want you to come there. My dearest ones, after completing my remaining duties and comforting my friends here, I will quickly return. Prabhu, know this to be certain. A letter will not come without your auspicious return. The Rajbasis will certainly perish.
Now their only destination is to be consumed by fire in that dry forest. Oh, brother! <laughs> Seeing this unprecedented spectacle of anguish crying, Rohini, Uddhava, Rukmini, Sachabama, and all the residents of the inner chambers became grief-stricken and cried out again and again. Hearing the sounds of weeping and distress, Sri Vasudev, Sri Ubersain, and all the Yadavas quickly ran there. Seeing the condition of Sri Krishna and Sri Balaram, they became devastated and cried loudly. And when Dharmacharya, the Brahmanas, and all the residents of the city came, they also cried out in the same way. At once, the vibration of the weeping of Sri Krishna and the associates pervaded the entire universe, giving birth to numerous calamities, knowing that no one besides Sri Krishna could restore the peace of the universe. Lord Brahma came there with his associates, seeing that Mahanarayan Sri Krishna tormented by love for his dearest devotees had fallen into an unprecedented condition. He could understand that the Lord was now anxious to manifest the hidden glories of the sweetness of his devotees praying for him. Carefully composing himself, Brahma called Garuda and told him, nearby, between Mount Revata and the ocean, Vishwakarma constructed a Sri Vrindavan which is adorned with the murtis of Sri Nanda Maharaj, Yashoda, the residents of Braj, and many cows. It is so splendorous that it seems to be the Sri Vrindavan which is situated in the Ventura Mandala. While Sri Krishna and Baladeva are in this condition, please carefully take them there. Take Rohini Devi also, but no one else. Then Brahmaji helped the residents of Dwarka to regain their composure and sent them to their own places. <laughs> Unable to leave Krishna while he was in that unconscious state, Uddhava, Devaki, the queens headed by Rukmini and Sajabhama, and Padmavati also went there. But at the request of Brahma, they stood at a distance and watched from a hidden position. Considering himself an offender due to having made Sri Krishna faint, Narada did not enter there. Instead, attired like a yogi, he remained hidden in the sky from where he could witness the sweetness of Sri Krishna's Leela. <laughs> then Sri Baladev regained consciousness and understood Brahmaji's intention. He wiped Sri Krishna's as well as his own lotus face, gently placed a garland of Kadamba flowers around his neck, a flute in Krishna's lotus hands, and a peacock feather in his crown. Hey brother, arise, arise! Wake up and see, it is late. The cows have already left for the forest, and your parents, overcome with affection, cannot even speak. Hey Krishna, get up. Hey, Mother, this morning I have seen many peculiar dreams, which all seem so real. I went to Mathura and killed Gamsa. I had a great kingdom named Dwarva constructed on the shore of the ocean, and I cannot quickly describe to you all the rest. Due to these long, enchanting dreams, which seemed like ages, I was unable to rise at the usual time. Hey brother, you will not consider it a lie when we go to the forest. 
back to his palace. Sri Uddhava brought Rukmini and the other queens back to consciousness and took them to the and took them to the inner chambers of Sri Krishna's residence. My dear son, may all auspiciousness be bestowed upon you. It is getting late. I will go prepare your lunch. My dear Uddhava, where is Sanjay Mama? My lord, when you were at that Raivata Hill, where Sri Navarindavan is constructed, your bog was such that the ignorant could not understand it. As she stood there and witnessed this bog from a distance, the ancient and wet wicked Padmuti immediately exclaimed, O oh, impious Devaki, hey unfortunate Rukmini and Sachabama, hey lowly queens headed by Jambavati, seeing this, you must now surely renounce your great pride and perform severe austerities and take birth as the dossies of these coward girls. Hearing these words, the highly intelligent Sri Devaki replied, Hey, you half-witted Padmavati, what is so astonishing about this? In our previous lives, Vasudev and I performed austerities to attain Sri Bhagavan as our son. But Nanda and Jashoda prayed to Brahma for Krishna Bhakti. Therefore, it is entirely natural that he has this type of love towards them, and that love is also dear to me. Then, Sri Rukmini joyfully said, The gopi's praying is superior to ours, because although we are fortunate enough to be his wives, 